Hello there. Who's Galaxy A6? That's me, Gail. Gail, okay. Hi, Gail. <laughs> I'll change that. <laughs> I hate to have to call you Galaxy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mm. How are you today? I'm doing good, doing good so far. Mm. Is, it, is it nice out where you are? It is. It's a very pleasant day here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Okay, Charlotte. And I'm in York, Pennsylvania. And it's, uh, it's oh my goodness, I just looked outside and I see gray, like a thunderstorm coming right over our house, just about. Well, they're saying it's approaching us too later this evening. Uh -huh. <laughs> Well, I think we're going, I saw that the radar gave me some uh, indication that we're going to have some severe storms. So I guess I should expect it. <laughs> oh, well, I like Charlotte. I just visited a, or just, well, I visited with a relative who recently moved there south of Charlotte around the Lake Wiley area. Oh yeah, yeah, not far from here. <laughs> Okay, I'm set up now. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> Anthony is letting other people into the class, so. Yeah. Uh, okay. Can you make me co-host? Oh, I'm sorry. I guess I'll let them in and then make you co-host. Sure will. <laughs> there you go. Yes, I see your hand raised there, Anthony. There you go. All right. And there's iPad 9.7. <laughs> Hi, iPad. Hi, Carol. Welcome. Hey, Marjorie. Hi. Are you having a good day? <laughs> yes, I'm yes. having a good day. Just doing classes. <laughs> yeah, well, you were in the. Uh, were you in the class? The meal, the uh, eat, eat meals for one, right? Yeah. Yeah. I was there this morning. <laughs> How was that? Did you like that? It was a great class. Oh yeah, I loved it. I'll try to come back to what on the sixteenth when she comes again. Yeah, the seventeenth. Yeah, I think it's the seventh, sixteenth or seventeenth. Yeah. Yeah, I'll I'll try to make a note of that. Yeah, yeah. Marjorie was just at a class uh, that one of our community members co-hosted with me. So she's got some real, really good information on how to cook for one or two people. <laughs> and, but she ran a class today or she shared a lot of information and she's going to do a second part coming up later in the month. And then we'll do them again because they seem pretty, it seems pretty popular. It seems like yeah. a popular topic. So <laughs> Did y'all bring some topics, some ideas about things you want to talk about today? <laughs> I'll give that I'll give you some time to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Alberta. Hi, Deb. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Still didn't find that strawberry dessert recipe. Nope. And I asked uh, several of my friends from years ago and nobody has it. No. Sorry. Oh my gosh. And knowing you, you were on the internet looking for it too, just in case it was hidden somewhere, but no. Well, there were some versions of it, but not what I really remember. So. Uh-oh. We hope that doesn't get lost to the ages. <laughs> it may have gone. Oh no. <laughs> so we're, we're really working on trying to put together a favorite strawberry desserts class. So if you have one and you want to mm. share it and talk about it in the class, I would love to have it. And we have a couple right now, um, but we were hoping we would have Alberta's and we don't right now, but uh, there's a few others. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. We'll go ahead and get started. There might be a few more people joining us. Anybody not come to one of these classes before? Is this a new class for anybody or a new session, I should say? Yes, me. It's new, it's new. Yeah. And yeah. you, you too, Gail? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. All righty. So, uh, and Carol, have I, I know Gail and I have been in a class together. Have you and I, have you attended some? No. Of 
classes, none at oh. all. Okay. I, I, I've gone to some other classes, but I've never been in class with you. Okay. Well, thanks for coming. I'm really glad you're here. And I hope that this will be the first of many. Yeah, this, I'm sure. This is a little bit different than, than the typical classes because this is an open forum kind of session uh, for us to just talk about whatever might be on our minds about cooking and food. So you mm -hmm. might have a question about something. Just this is a chance for us to uh, bounce things off of each other, you know, and just uh, okay. talk about whatever is on our minds. So that's fun. The other classes are a little more structured with topics. And so I'll yes. show some of those as we go along. I want to say hi to Pat also. Uh, Pat, Pat, do we know each other? No, first class. First class, okay. Well, welcome. And I'm glad that you're here. Mm -hmm. And I see, is it, I see somebody else is joining. I might as well just wait a moment. <laughs> Where are you from, Carol? Toronto. Toronto. Yeah. And how are things in Canada? Uh, <laughs> I got along slowly with the vaccines. Yeah. yeah. Waiting on my second vaccine. Yeah. 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 Yes. I'm where are you from? I, I'm from York, Pennsylvania. So oh, okay. All right. Pennsylvania. And I see that we, is it, is it Jiba? Am I saying that correctly? Do you want to unmute yourself and just say hi? Hi, I'm Kim. And am I saying your name correctly? Yes. Okay, Jiba. Well, it's nice to have you. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. So as I was mentioning to Carol and anyone else who was um, here at the time, I was saying that this class is a little different from the other cooking classes that I have or food classes, because this is an open forum about cooking. And so we bring ideas, we bring topics and we bounce them off of each other. So maybe you can think about that. If you ever had one of those, I wonder, you could put it out there as a question. I wonder what, or what appliances do you like? Or what, what tools do you enjoy using? Kitchen tools do you like? Or what's your favorite recipe? Anything like that. So my name is Deb Livingston. I am in York, Pennsylvania. So on the East Coast and about to get, uh, a, bit, about to get a thunderstorm. My background is in business. And that was a lot of my time spent in training and development in, in the corporate world and leadership coaching and that sort of thing. And now I can invest in my hobbies, which are cooking and organic gardening. And I try to bring a lot of that uh, knowledge and experience <laughs> to the classes that I teach. And I think it's a lot of fun to get together in these cooking classes because we do really all learn from each other. And I bring some of the information <laughs> to the table in, uh, in the class. And I'm just going to mute a few people. Sometimes I should mention this, when your microphone is on, it does pick up background noise. And so that makes, that makes we all hear that. So if you could just go ahead and turn your microphone off until you're ready to talk. I do encourage you to um, participate though. So anyway, ideally we're all on camera because then we can see each other just like we're in the kitchen or just like we're in a classroom or in, in each other's living room. And, and you can either chat and ask questions in the chat or you can feel free to unmute yourself, especially in a group this size, it's small enough that we can really have conversation. And you're always welcome to uh, request a copy of a recording of any of the classes that you attended from help at getsetup.io. And we are live streaming this class. So if there are people out there on live screen, stream watching this, I wanna say hi to you and especially invite you to join, be part of the conversation and really participate in the discussion. So please do join us, but otherwise enjoy the show. And I do sometimes share with you websites or products or services along the way, a lot of times I do, because these are things that you might be interested in, but it, there's no financial 
relationship between me and any company or service, nor with Get Set Up. So no, no um, affiliation that way. So I'm just going to um, start with this though, just a little bit of an icebreaker while you're thinking about what you might like to talk about today. Did you know that today is National Egg Day? National Egg Day, you know, there's a day for everything. Uh, you'd be amazed. So today happens to be National Egg Day. And I wondered what is your favorite way to eat eggs? So I would like to, who would, who would like to start the conversation? Anybody want to start it? And then maybe I'll just call on you. Somebody jump in there. I'll start. I like to eat eggs. Uh, I like boiled eggs, uh, egg salad. Uh, I also like fried eggs. I'm not so crazy about scrambled. I'll eat it, but that's not my favorite. And of course, omelets. Okay, so you are. So eggs are are eggs primarily a breakfast food for you? You said you liked egg salad, though. So yeah, oh yeah, or a lunch. Uh, I do make a quick fried rice with eggs when I'm hungry and desperate. <laughs> Hey, fried rice is great. I love fried rice. Yeah, with eggs, yes. So who else eats eggs the way that Carol eats them? Well, I love stuffed eggs. Mm -hmm. Stuffed eggs. I, I do including them in, in quiche. I like that. Mm -hmm. I just love eggs anyway. Mm -hmm. Any way I can cook them. <laughs> so when you make stuffed eggs, Gail, oh, and by the way, I tend to ask questions because I'm just an inquisitive person and I like to know, but please don't let me ask all the questions. I would like for you to ask each other these other questions. Okay. So I'm going to ask one and then I'm going to step back and let you carry some more of the conversation. Gail, I would really like to know what is in your stuffed egg recipe. Uh, I put a little mayonnaise, paprika. I love ranch dressing. So I'll put a little of that, a little dash of sugar. And uh, um, this is dash. And just kind of change it up from time to time, to change the taste of it. But that's basically how I deal with them. Mm -hmm. I never thought about putting ranch dressing in. I put mayonnaise in, but and mustard. Well, it just adds a little something, a little something. to it. <laughs> a little something different. Do you put the um, Do you put the powdered ranch dressing in, like the mix? No, or mm -hmm. just, just no, just the bottle. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Just right. gives it a little different flavor. I like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you mean Do you mean uh, deviled eggs when you say stuffed eggs? Yeah, that's what we call them, stuffed eggs. Oh, okay, yeah, so different, <laughs> yeah. See, and we always call them stuffed eggs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I never heard that term before, but I thought it sounded like the same. You yeah. know, okay. <laughs> I, I thought the same thing, Carol. I don't, I've never heard yeah. it stuffed It's a, eggs. probably a regional thing, but. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. like I said, I'm originally from Tennessee, and that's okay. what we always refer to them as. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Sounds like a de delicious recipe. It does. It, it, they are good. I really enjoyed them. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Marjorie? Her mic's I mic. eat them anywhere and done anyhow. And uh, I don't think I have a preference. Usually they're boiled or scrambled, but I really don't have a preference. I just, I just like them and usually it's the go-to thing for breakfast. Yeah, good protein meal, right? Yeah. <laughs> I really like making them in frittatas, like a frittata kind of thing where I turn on the oven and then I just saute some vegetables and then whatever I want and then pour the eggs over top and maybe put, well, of course I always have to put cheese on everything. So I put cheese on top and then pop, pop the whole thing in the oven and mm -hmm. bake it for about 10 minutes. And, mm -hmm. and it's a wonderful breakfast dish. <laughs> How about you, Pat? What about eggs for you? You have a favorite way to eat eggs? Okay. Alberta, eggs. 
<laughs> well, I kind of laughed when you said it was National Egg Day because I um, volunteer for Meals on Wheels. <laughs> and uh, the meal that they served today was egg salad. Oh my gosh, yeah. I wonder oh. if, they, if they knew they were celebrating National Egg Day. <laughs> I'm sure they do know because they do pretty much go with the holidays. So it was a vegetable soup and an egg salad sandwich and coleslaw and peach crisp mm -hmm. and an orange. So that sounds like a pretty nutritious Meals on Wheels dinner. Well, they generally try to do a very, or not try, they always have to. The meals yeah. are planned uh, by a dietitian because they feel that for some people, um, especially those living alone and if they have health issues, a lot of times this is their only or their main meal of the day. Yeah. And so they want them to get all the food groups in so that it's always well planned. It's a great program for anyone that is eligible. <laughs> Needs the help. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. What about other types of eggs? I know I have eaten some quail eggs, is there any special way that you prepare them? Well, that's a great question. I have no experience. What do you, what experience do you have with other kinds of eggs? Duck eggs or anything quail eggs? I don't have any experience with any other kind. No, I don't either. I don't know, we'll have to try, maybe we need an egg challenge. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've eaten duck eggs as well. You've eaten what, <laughs> duck eggs? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Carol, I have a question about your egg salad recipe because I'm always looking to improve upon mine. What do you put in yours? I like to put um, mayonnaise, um, a, a little salt, a little pepper. Uh, I like paprika too, especially smoked paprika. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And then I put, um, I'm trying to think of what you call it. Uh, usually when people have hot dogs, they have mustard and ketchup. And relish. And relish, <laughs> exactly. And I, and I like a little relish in there or some sweet onions. And that's, mm -hmm. my, uh, that's my recipe. That's your recipe. So onions and relish is different from what I put in. I yeah, the little sweet onions. Yeah, a little bit of sweet onion. That would be very mm -hmm. good. That sounds good. I just mix up mix it up with the with the mayonnaise and a little mustard and kind of like my deviled eggs but then i add uh, i yeah. like olives not as much mustard just a tiny bit not as much as i put yeah. in my deviled eggs yeah but i love olives in my eggs oh oh i know i've never had olives with my eggs I should try. I have green olives with stuff you know the stuff uh, going with the pimento. Yeah. so there's pimento yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so what ideas or what questions do you have for this group today? What do you want to talk about? I, a couple of times during the last two weeks, I've had a cornmeal porridge with coconut. Does anybody have any idea of how to cook this? You Twice have. I've had them and it, and it was pretty good. Like a breakfast. You're breaking up a little bit. Can you? Yeah, you're breaking up a little, yeah. Oh, um, I said I've had cornmeal porridge with coconut twice during the past couple of weeks, and it was really very good from two different places. So I wonder if anybody has any idea as to how to make this or if you're familiar with it. I'm not. You know, correctly, you said cornmeal. Porridge. Yeah, kind of, of cornmeal porridge. I haven't heard the word porridge in a long time when I was a little girl. And I used to say porridge. Yes. And made with coconuts. One of them had Sounds delicious. bits of coconut you could taste in it. The other one didn't, but it had a coconut flavor as well. Mm. Coconut you... milk or something in it. Well, they were, they were very good both times. So can you share how you made it? No, I didn't make it. I bought them both times from two different restaurants. Oh, okay. I'm trying to find out if anybody's familiar with making it. Oh. No, I've never made it. Yeah. I haven't either. <laughs> mm. But it, it was very good, both times. Looking it up, what kind of restaurant was it? Uh, a Jamaican restaurant. Yeah. Some, and 
the next time it was at the hospital rest, uh, the restaurant in the hospital. Oh my goodness, that sounds like a pretty, pretty different. <laughs> well, we're good. We're good. I guess more Caribbean cooking. It yeah. sounds like sounds like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so it was very good. I do see a recipe for it here. Oh, okay. And it uh, it uses um, coconut and condensed milk. Oh, here, I'll, I'll share it. Oh, okay. Great. Can you see it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It looks very substantial. Yeah. <laughs> you should get it. It looks very good. Jamaica. Mm -hmm. It's Jamaica. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's a great breakfast food. Did you have it for breakfast? Yes. Yeah. Huh. So let's get down here to the recipe. It looks like it scores reasonably high. From corn milk, oh, coconut yeah. milk, bay leaf, kosher salt. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, that that thing I, I I'll try it. Yeah, ain't got nothing different in it. You want Not me made. to take this recipe and uh, copy it and send it in email, maybe? Here's another one. See if this one this one has even more. Oh, that looks good. With some fruit on top. Ah, here's a. Wait till the ad's over. Mm -hmm. Maybe. <laughs> it looks delicious. Well, it looks up there. I thought there was going to be a video showing how to make it there. Yeah. But they just showed us an ad. That was a bait and switch. Uh -oh. Okay, well, this one, see if it's any different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Coconut milk, cinnamon. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A little bit of background noise there. There we go. Mm -hmm. Condensed milk. Now, this is the sweetened condensed milk. Yeah. yeah. So, oh. Well, I'll, I'll attach a couple of those just to have the recipe so we can, we can experiment with that. I think this good. That sounds like a, an inter, a nice thing. Yeah, thank That's you. Oh, you're that looks very tasty. <laughs> it was. You have a mango, a mango on there. Talk to ah. I thought it was peaches. It looks good, though. No. Maybe it Either one would probably be just as good. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So what else are we thinking about today? I was wondering what different cuisines people like. Uh, I could share some of my cuisine. Yeah. What do you like? What kind of cuisine? Uh, what kind of cuisine? Uh, I live in Toronto, and as you know, we're very... Uh, multi-ethnic here, so get exposure to a lot of different cuisines. I, I'm originally from Guyana, and mm. so I like a lot of, you know, a lot of Jamaican food. Uh, the, the jerk is one of the big things. I mm. also, I also like a lot of Puerto Rican food, even though I don't get it here, but I used to live in New York, and poor, I would say Puerto Rican food is probably next to my own local food that I grew up with. I love, I love fried chicken, even though I can't make it. I, I, I don't make it very well. And um, what else do I like? Chinese food, of course, and Greek food. Those would be probably my... Those are your most favorite. So yeah. Southern fried chicken? Yes, but I have a girlfriend. She could make it in a in a minute. Um, she lives in Cleveland, but I just don't seem to make it very well. Neither do I. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And I really like it. I swear that fried chicken is the best. <laughs> He had a good recipe for that because I know I had southern relatives that made that so well. My mother used to say the same thing. I can't, yeah. mm -hmm. can't get the way Aunt Luella used to make it. <laughs> yeah. So other cuisines. That's a great question, Carol. I like that question. Mm. Yeah. Global cuisine. We have a well, I kind of came today because. Um, it's just my husband and now now my three kids are all out the house and I don't cook a lot anymore mm -hmm. and my taste palette is very limited <laughs> my husband always say the plainer it is the better I like it so <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just not a really good good cook and I'm always looking for quick easy dishes to cook that's what I was kind of hoping for today <laughs> yeah, <it's a> real <laughs> simple, not too exotic. It sounds like. Mm -hmm. well, here's what I'm having for dinner tonight. I'll share this. I'm going, I just sent my husband up to the fish market up the street to get some flounder. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to mix some breadcrumbs with Parmesan cheese and a little bit of butter and just sprinkle that, season, season the flounder and sprinkle that on top of the flounder and bake it in the oven for a little bit. Mm. It's quick and easy and a little bit of a different taste there. I oftentimes don't really put any topping on my flounder. So. Wow. And I love seafood. I try to stick with seafood. I love salmon and tuna and uh, things like that. So I cook those probably way too much, but they're so easy. <laughs> and they're uh, they're healthy and good for you. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, like, you Gail, like you, Gail. Like you, Gail. I I. I cook very quick. The kids are grown up and living yeah. on their own, and I no longer cook things that take a long time. Exactly, exactly. Some of the food that I mentioned, I would order in, or if I went to a restaurant, but I don't cook very elaborate meals, except on holidays. Special Christmas, occasions, yes. Home, <laughs> then everything, the turkey comes out from scratch and everything else, but generally speaking, I cook very yeah, the quicker, the like better. Ground beef and things that cook very fast. Yes. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. Can, can I share with you something else that's very cultural? Uh, a bread fruit. I don't know. I guess the West Indians would, in the group, would be aware of it. But we yes. just picked up from the. Yeah. Today. Mm -hmm. Ah. And this is what it looks like. What kind of a fruit is that? Bread oh, fruit. Bread fruit. Bread fruit. Oh, I am not yeah. sure. And what do you do with you it? Cook, How do you prepare you it? Cook it like a, you cook it like a potato. Oh, yes, okay. Yes, it looks like, like a potato, and you can you can boil it, you can roast fry it, you can fry it. Why they have a festival where they use it probably in like over a hundred different ways. Every wow. year they have a competition. So it's very, very well known over that side of the world. And we mm -hmm. also in the West Indies. Like I say, seasonal, occasionally we get it down here in Florida, but it is um, something you'll find always in Hawaii, always in the Caribbean. Yeah, I have heard and, of it. I've never yeah. tasted or tried it, but I am familiar with it. Yeah, it, it, it's almost like a, a potato as well. Yeah, yeah. Potato. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of kind of bland and it kind yeah. of takes the taste of whatever Whatever you're, you're cooking. Yeah. Oh yeah. kind of like an eggplant. It just kind of soaks up whatever you're cooking with it. it yeah. yeah, kind of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it doesn't have to and now now you can have it in chips and so on. Chips. Like yeah. Potato chips and everything. You can have breakfast yeah. chips and everything. Yeah. Now you can have the flowers, like we're having coconut flour and all the different flowers. You can have flour as well. Wow. That is yeah. supposed to be very healthy for you. So I you always this. wondered about it too. I always wondered what is breadfruit? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's what it looks like. Okay. Now, what is your challenge? What is your challenge in peeling it? I haven't had it. I know it. I, I've had it as a child. I've had it. Not recently, but I like it. But how do you? Well, you 
thing is. You have a you have a pretty sharp knife, but you can feel it. It's not it's not really difficult to feel. Like like, like a sweet potato. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it feels like that. Just cut it around and, and feel it. Cut it in small pieces and then peel it. Yeah, cut it in small pieces and peel it. Yeah. Yeah. So is it the kind of thing you could prepare in a skillet? Like with onions or other vegetables, could you do it that way as well? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Quick. I'm always looking for something quick. <laughs> it takes about it, it takes about twenty to twenty five oh. minutes to cook. Oh, okay. And then okay. and then you can you can put your onions and your your peppers and everything on it as well. But it will cook it'll take longer to cook than they will. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Marjorie, how are you going to use that vegetable? This one? I think that what I will do with it today, I would cook it, I will boil it, and then I will mash it like mashed potatoes, like I would mash potatoes. Mm. So I think I'm gonna do it. I think I'm gonna do it that way today. I wonder if they would mash if it had the texture of mashed like mashed potato. That's yeah, it. yeah, it does. You can cook it until cook it very soft and it will mash that way. If you don't want to, then you can leave it in where you can just slice it mm -hmm. as, as long or you can just slice it. So when you cut up a potato, after you peel a potato and have it cut, it gets brown and you really have to use it right away or cook it right away. Is the same thing true? Of the no, this, this doesn't turn brown. Okay, because that's a big fruit. It's I could see that that could be something you could use over several meals. Yeah, yeah, yes, you can. Yes, that's mm -hmm. definitely true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I missed where you said the country. Who has the uh, contest, the cooking contest? I thought that might be fun to provide a link to. Hawaii. Yeah. Okay. And Hawaii and the Philippines, that that area, but Hawaii have the contest. Okay, got it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Thinking of things that could be cooked in the same way as Marjorie mentioned, the bread, fruit, uh, bread fruit. that I like is, is plantains. Yeah, plantains are good too. Uh, I like I mean, uh, several ways. Yeah, I like plantains, both green mm -hmm. plantains and fried plantains. I try mm -hmm. too many fried plantains because they're so delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm eating while frying, so uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 but it is delicious. And I love so, chips, of course. Yes. Yeah. So if there if there are people like me who don't know what to do with a plantain, how to really pick them out, how to really use them. You said you have them both green and ripe. Yes. So I'm just, I've used them before in a recipe and I've done a little bit, but I don't really know my way around it natively like I would a potato or something else where I would really right. think else I might use it so so um, can you talk a little bit about how you use plantains aside from chips and <laughs> oh uh, as I said it's pretty much as Madri mentioned you could you could use it um, to eat you know with your with your meats you could fry it uh, you could boil it um, you could make uh, and when it's when it's green it tastes and the texture is different um, and it looks green and some people might think it's a giant banana, but it's not, it's a different, it's, you know, in a related species. And when it's, um, uh, on the other hand, we might eat it as something sweet with a savory meal. And, and that's when it's, it's, it's ripe, we call it ripe, but the, the skin turns yellow and the, the more ripe it gets, sometimes it, it gets dark, it gets black. And, and usually what we do then is uh, we'll fry it in oil and have it on the side. And again, um, it's, it's delicious. Yeah. Uh, so so that, would be, that would be the difference. Uh, I, I wish I had one here to show you, but uh, the plantains are. Yeah, I just wondered whether you, so you saute them in, you just, Fry them in a little butter. Or you fry, no, well, I've never fried them in, but you fry them in oil. In oil. Yes, yes. And it's pretty, yes. And when you fry it in oil, it starts to caramelize. Okay. Yes, yeah. And yeah. 
the sweetness it intensifies. It, it's literally sweet. And, um, and then you can eat it with a lot of things. And it offsets, you know, it's like eating savory things with sweet. Right. Uh, yeah. So uh, here in Toronto, it's very common to eat, uh, like have curry and then have that on the side, curry goat or something like that, and have that on the side. Or you could just buy it, you know, and cook it. It cooks very fast. Oh, it does cook fast. Because I was just yes. going to ask you, you talk about it caramelizing. I wondered when do you know it's when do you know it's finished? So it goes fast, but it's oh caramel. because it starts, it starts to get brown. Right. Uh, it starts to get brown. And you also you smell it. <laughs> I guess I need to get some plantains and make. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So you mentioned something very quickly there that I caught and I want to ask you about, and that is, uh, you talked about curry goat, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So does anybody else here eat goat? Okay. Sure. So Marjorie, you two have really come from similar culinary backgrounds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anybody else here? Alberta, any experience with goat? Nelda has some experience with goat. Yeah, um, I need to know, know more about that. It's, it's, kind of, it's kind of close to lamb. It's kind of close to lamb in a way. Okay. It's close. Yeah, when you go to Mexico, it's called cabrito. Okay. Cabrito, cabrito in sangre, so it's like a goat in blood. <laughs> <laughs> the blood is delicious. You know, you wouldn't think so, but it is. <laughs> well, it makes the sauce. It's in the sauce, like it's 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 part of the sauce. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. it would be similar to you know when I think about when we would make steaks and have them rare or medium rare, the juice that came out of right. that was right. was blood. So you know. Yeah. But it sounds much better when we say juice or slaw or sauce, right? <laughs> yeah, it sounds much better. <laughs> so, have you prepared it? How does it come? How do you how do you buy goat? Oh, I I just eat it in Mexico when I used to go to Mexico a lot. I I've never really killed. I think my grandfather used to kill. Mm -hmm. Kill them. I mean, I would. I remember they they would stick the knife in their throat and drain out the blood. Oh, it was it was horrible. It was horrible for a kid to see mm -hmm. that. I thought, no, I won't kill a goat. <laughs> yeah. Well, here in Toronto, you'd buy it. At, you'd buy it at uh, maybe a, a an ethnic uh, grocery store. Grocery store and so on. Yeah. Yeah, we we do here too. Just like you mm -hmm. would lamb or beef it's like lamb yes you have goat they're in the same grocery store same essentially yeah. so i think the, the practices are more regulated you know the killing now is, is yeah they you know years ago they used to kill the, the cows and the goats and the sheep in that primitive way but now it's more regulated mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, yeah, you really wouldn't see it you know see anybody doing it now right yeah. Not, a, not a regular household. Yeah, it's right, true. If there were cuts of goat that were particularly, you know, when you go to buy beef, you look for certain cuts of beef because they're more tender and so on. Is that, um, do they sell goat by those kind of parts or? I'm real, this is really, I'm, I'm not familiar with it at all. Not usually, the, most of you just see it all, all cut up. Lamb, yes, that, yes, that's how I see more, it too. The yeah. lamb more with, with like the shanks or certain parts. Mm -hmm. I've never seen it like that. I've seen just the whole thing. Okay. Yes. Right. Good. That gives me some idea. <laughs> now, you know, when you're not familiar with these things and then you see them in a store and you think that you might like to try it, you realize how much you don't know about it. Yeah, yeah the, the meat is more like... If you've ever eaten bear, more a wilder taste. A wilder taste? Did you say bear? 
Deer. Deer. Venison. 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 I've never yeah. had bear, but I don't know. Alberto, have you ever had bear? You might have out there. <laughs> <laughs> no. But venison, but no bear. Of, uh, <laughs> I'm sure my cousin has eaten it because he's a hunter and uh, he eats anything that he kills. So yeah. he has. But one of the things my mother always did with any kind of game was to soak it in milk. Uh -huh. it uh -huh. to take away any gamey, mm -hmm. any gamey taste. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so was that true? Do you soak your goat in milk like that? Have you ever done that? No. I never. Uh, yeah. I think no, we do. We do a lot more lime, lime and salt. Yes. Oh, okay. Lime, yeah, not to. But That's usually you cook it next to it with a lot of spices, like the curry. The sort of thing that kind of covers yeah. the the yes. Game of taste. Yes. Because mm. I I think of goats. Uh, so I've had goats, uh, goat milk already, or different goat products that mm -hmm. taste goaty. Mm -hmm. But then I did. Somebody did say. I read somewhere or heard somebody say that that was because the they kept the goats too close to the they were too close to the uh, billing yep. counter. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I haven't heard of that. <laughs> well, different meats have different flavors and different you know gay meat. Tastes, yeah. Yeah. It's like there is a difference between duck and chicken, even though they're both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't care for the taste of duck either. You know, yeah. I'm not that big on it either, but I've had it. It's a, a strong taste. Yeah. For yes. It. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I grew up in a family of small game hunters. And I don't know if anybody eats this anymore, but they used to go hunting for rabbits and squirrels yeah, and pheasants. <laughs> and those were all things that we ate. And of course, if you roast a pheasant, generally they dry out. They're really dry. They're not very tasty. So what, what we would always do with all of that game was put it into a frying pan with butter and a whole lot of onions and saute it long and low and slow for until right. it was falling off the bones. It was so delicious. And people would say, you're eating rabbit, you're eating squirrel. And <laughs> I couldn't wait until we were having rabbit or squirrel for dinner, the pheasant. Yeah, but yeah. Our, our family did that too, but we a lot of times would brine it, um, yeah. mm. pickle it and brine it and then make it with a sour cream gravy. Mm. And they're all delicious yeah. that way. Yeah, brining is a great. What does rabbit taste, taste like? Like tastes chicken, like rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> like chicken, everything. <laughs> rabbit. Yeah, it's part, you know what? Um, and it does have a different rabbit. taste. Rabbit. Than rabbit. Rabbit. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. You've ever had domestic rabbit in a? I don't think it tastes anything like a wild rabbit. So I like Yeah, I've had them both and I agree. Uh, I'm from Tennessee, so um, we grew up eating rabbits and things like mm. that too. But yeah, they taste quite different if you just go and buy it in a store. Yeah. Yeah. And, and which do you prefer? Uh, I got used to the wild rabbit. Mm -hmm. So that's what I prefer. <laughs> Interesting, yeah. I've never. Me too. Me too. We, I, I ate rabbit a lot when we were young. Mm -hmm. So how do you cook rabbit? My mom. What I remember is uh, when my parents would put it in a big skillet and pretty much like what Deb said, put lots of onion and I think they called braising it. 
Mm -hmm. I think that's what the term they use for it, but lots of onions and cook it really slow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you keep adding water to it. So you let it, let it all cook down and it starts to brown and caramelize and then you add more water. And then you just keep braising it, as Gail was saying, until you get it to that softness. And the, uh -huh. onions, the onions almost go disappear practically. You have to put a little <laughs> in if you want onions with it. So yeah. it's interesting. Yeah. It's very good. But I'm like you, Gail. I've really come to prefer. I prefer the wild rabbit, and now I can't get it anymore. Mm -hmm. I I, maybe I should have married a hunter. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> uh, Anthony's laughing. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, have any of you ever eaten turtle? No, no, no. I, no, that, no. It takes some getting used to for me. I, I never really mm -hmm. like that. They put mm -hmm. called turtle soup. Mm -hmm. I never I've, really heard liked of, it. I've heard of turtle soup, but yeah. It's an old right. Tennessee thing. <laughs> my mother used to make it uh, when my uncles would get a turtle. And we used to go to Wisconsin, and uh, <laughs> I hate to say it, but uh, they'd uh, hang the turtle on a tree. They'd put a nail in its tail and oh. chop off its head and oh. let the meat out. And then you clean the meat out and made delicious turtle soup, though. Oh, Jesus. But, my mother came from a family of 12 children and they had to eat anything and everything. So she mm -hmm. took out all those things and wonderful. ended up delicious. So that's what that you did. That was kind of my situation. Family. Yeah, I came from a family of nine, so we ate everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my grandparents, they would find that they would get the snapping turtles too. And you have to get rid of, you have to find a way to neutralize them because they can really bite. So they'd cut the head mm. and uh, make the turtle soup. And they made the tick turtle soup like they make, we make in this area, something called chicken corn soup. Do you mm. have that in your areas? Chicken corn no. soup is not something. No, not never heard of it. So chicken corn soup is, is at least the way we make it is, is uh, cooking off the chicken and then adding potatoes and corn and parsley. And some people put noodles in it. Uh, we don't put noodles in, we put the potatoes in instead. And so what they would do is make uh, corn soup like that. And instead of using chicken, they would use the turtle. I couldn't really even tell the difference at that point. But then there's this other kind of turtle soup that's more dark and is served with sherry in restaurants. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And I don't really know how to how to make that, but I never really liked it too much either. Are these turtles the, the one on the land or the one from the sea? The turtles that we're talking about. They're the they're the, the, land? the land, the snapper turtles, I believe. So turtles. Oh, okay. turtles yeah, are, that we yeah. had the one on the land too. I don't know about the sea turtles. Yeah. No, are they large or small? I'm trying to think of. If you had they the could be of varying sizes. Oh. Um, they could be, usually they were medium to large, the ones that mm -hmm. we had. I don't remember any small ones. Oh, yeah. okay. Just <laughs> so they look I'll share the screen here and just show you what a snapping turtle is. Like. Snapping turtles. I've heard that name. Oh my goodness, they are large. They can be pretty large. They're huge. Oh, he looks very. Oh. Yeah, like I said, I don't remember any small ones. <laughs> oh. Oh. Now feed it all Oh. I don't think there's much body left under most of these little shells, so I don't mm. think it's Yeah. <laughs> they they must be. Yeah. They look like they look like they'd be a challenge to, to prepare to get rid of that shell. Yeah, I know. How do you do that? That's a good question. I have no clue. I never saw that process and I didn't want to. So I have no clue. <laughs> 
Call me when dinner is ready. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Well, I have to look here because here's a two minute video on how to do that. Maybe I've been successfully. Maybe you don't want to see it. You want to see it? Just... I hope you're not going to scar us. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to. I just saw that. Uh, no, I don't. No, I don't. I won't scar you. <laughs> okay. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a curiosity, but that just goes to show you there is there is nothing you can't find on YouTube. That's true. That's true. <laughs> That's true. So I have a question. Someone is setting up a kitchen from scratch. And with all of your experience and knowledge over the years of cooking and being in a kitchen, what would you now tell them would be the important things to have to set up a great kitchen? What advice would you give? With the way I cook now, I love to have a great sauteing pan and then a great large pot. I think from those two items, I could do and cook anything. And I'm also a smoker, so I have a, I'll have a smoker that I cook. It's, smoking is no fail. If you have the new kind of smokers they have, it's no fail cooking. You can't go wrong with it. <laughs> cook right. anything on it. You know, I have an electric kettle just for making tea and water and everything. And <laughs> I, I couldn't do without that now. <laughs> how people, you know, live before just boiling water in a stove. But I just love the electric kettle. Mm. <laughs> I'm interested, Gail, in the, in the smoker. So is this a smoker? Mm. Smoker. Oh, a smoker, yeah, that I have in my backyard. You can buy them at Lowe's, Home Depot, and places like that. But it's no fail cooking. You can cook anything on it, and it just always comes out so tasty and delicious. It never, it's never dried out or anything. It's just, it just comes out good. Turkey from hamburgers to turkeys, I cook mm -hmm. anything. That's good. That's good. Joy, I'm hungry. I think you need a good set of knives. You're right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. I would agree. For some plates. A good, a good chef's knife, a good deboner. I like the pots that are easy to clean as non stick pots mm. because I've had challenges with uh, stainless steel pots. And I know stainless steel pots are what real chefs use, but uh, I, I just really like those. Uh, <clears throat> that are very easy, easy to clean and have a you know good little hefty weight to them. I I I, I like that. and uh, and they're great for safety as well. If you ever forget anything on the stove, they don't burn. Yeah. That's they right. burn dry but they will not burn. They will not continue to burn and mm, oh that's interesting. At your house of fire like the aluminum and wood yeah. wouldn't do anything. They'll just mm. stay there. So I found it really, really good for safety. Yeah. It's in the stainless steel. Oh, that's good. The stainless steel? Uh-huh. Yeah. Stainless steel pots. Yeah. Will never burn, you said? Oh. They will not burn. Yeah, they ah. Oh, I thought you were so, saying non-stick. I thought you were saying non-stick too, yeah. No, stainless, well, stainless steel, the, 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 the pot itself was stainless steel. The food inside would burn, but the pot would not burn. The pot would just stay there. Mm. So your, your house wouldn't burn down <laughs> more or less. <laughs> it's, it's a great safety uh, utensil. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I actually have a set of, set of stainless steel pots and pans that I've had since before I got married. Mm. And they are just... I, I just really like them. I, I feel like I'm in, I'm in relationship with my pots and pans because mm -hmm. I know them, they know me, you know, I know exactly. Yeah, you know how to use them, yeah. I do know, yeah. what Carol, what I learned that I would tell anybody who was getting stainless steel is that mm -hmm. uh, you, they get 
they transfer heat very well. They hold heat very well. So, so I was always a hurried cooker at, or a hurried cook and I'd turn the heat up very high. And so I would tend to burden things mm -hmm. quickly. And that made it seem like my stainless steel was difficult to cook with. But when I learned that I just would need to really use much lower heat to get the same result, mm -hmm. then I wasn't burning things nearly as much. And when I do forget about something or walk away and burn something, like the other day I had a steamer basket in one of my pots and I forget, oh, I was steaming shrimp. That was the biggest tragedy because I ruined them. But I walked away, yeah. I walked away and and they, I was steaming them and they burned. They burned so badly because the bottom of the pot dried out and it was black and it actually made the shrimp taste like it was burned and blackened because that came up through. And I looked at my stainless steel pan and I thought, that's not, I don't know about this. This one I might not be able to get cleaned off, but sure enough, I could clean. Uh, and uh -huh. a, big, a big way to, a secret to that, or I, I think what's been useful for me over the years is just to take a st stainless steel and put it under the water, put it back on the stove and let it cook a little bit more. And then a lot of that burned stuff softens up and comes off. Mm -hmm. Now that thing, that pan that I burned the other day, uh, I, I had to get the steel wool out but it came off with the steel wool after a little bit of elbow grease. Grease. <laughs> yeah. But low and slow on the, or, or I should say just lower temperature on the stainless steel makes that much easier. Can you cook eggs on there? I, I've got a set of, sa of Salad Master. Uh, it's called Salad Master. I got away when I started teaching way back then. And I love them too, and, but I like them for things that are, that I'm going to put a lot of water in them or, you know, a soup or a, Mm -hmm. I make my rice in one of them, and that's the only thing I'll use for rice, for Mexican rice, you know. But uh, I, I've never been able to make eggs in there. They, I just, they stick. I don't know. I just haven't been able to make eggs. No, I can make eggs in those. I don't have a problem with that. Now, when I make my frittata and I put it in the oven, I do make sure that I, um, that I spray the edges because the the egg will stick. Otherwise, yeah. well, that's if I want it to release and have everything come out clean. Uh -huh. And I don't really feel about that if it's just me and there's a little bit of crust left around the edge of the pan. It's not a big. Problem. So yeah, then the secret, I guess, is just to make it to to start it off really really low low heat. That's probably my my problem. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Try yeah. that and see if that helps. Because and and the other thing I'll do is use a lid. Because it's when they heat up a lot, they will, especially with eggs, they'll dry out. So I put a, put a lid on. Let it and cook. I'm talking about over easy eggs, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes, that too. Okay. Wow. So you it's easy easy to to cook it. Okay. And don't, don't forget to grease them. Now, see, I don't have a problem with putting okay. butter in the pan for my eggs. That's something I feel, I, I'll do butter and a little bit of avocado oil or a combination of butter and spray. So I don't have to use a lot, a lot of butter, but I like the flavor of butter in my eggs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I got those orange ones that came out real popular. You know, everybody was buying those orange ones. Oh my God, those, that did not work at all. <laughs> I mean, they make it sound like everything you make just will just slide right off. Oh, all those stick, yeah, non-stick. Was it a non-stick pan or was yeah, it? yeah? They do come out with those different pans. So you just absolutely have to have them, right? <laughs> Anybody else have advice they would give to somebody setting up a kitchen? I think one of the things I would say about that is not a particular gadget or a particular tool or anything. It's just that, like Gail was saying, she can make almost anything in a pot, in one big pot and in a frying pan. And it would be to not crowd your kitchen up with single use devices, whether they're appliances or they're- That's utilities. true. Yeah, Gail's shaking her head. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, keep it simple. That's what I find. What works best for you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. How about the microwave? I know some people still have misgivings about the microwave. Um, 
I try to do as little as possible in my microwave. It's necessary, but I do as little in it as possible. Mm -hmm. No, long time. Mm -hmm. And then stay away from it when you're when it is on. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, that those uh, what is it called? Those rays that it, that come yeah. come at you are really really bad for you, supposedly. Mm -hmm. You know, the the Yep, same here. I on my shoulder, bring it the other day I was actually on camera in the kitchen cooking something and I was heating a little bit of butter in the microwave or something just to use in a recipe for on in class and my microwave went kaflooey. It had been acting up, but it started to run and make a really strange noise. I couldn't get it to turn off. I was afraid to open it because it, it felt <laughs> like it might have been it's scary. Yeah. It was really scary. So it's defunct right now. We had to bring our portable, our counter microwave in from another, another area. But yeah, I feel like you, Gail. I don't want to use it too much. Well, you know what? It's four o'clock. So we've got, we've had a nice conversation about this. Has been fun. It's nice <laughs> meeting everyone. It's meeting you all, and we wandered around a lot of different topics. So I hope that you'll join next week and bring more topics. You know, people come up with topics and then they don't come back the following week. So it would be <laughs> nice if we had some. It would be nice if we had some continuity that way, or if you just knew that when you came that you just bring, bring something you want to know, and that gets kind of fun. So uh -huh. I had other questions here, but we'll talk about that another time. Uh, I'm doing a chicken curry. Alberta, you asked for chicken curry. I'm doing it tomorrow. It could be kind of crazy. <laughs> Things are going to get crazy. I'm not sure. Uh, but no, anyway. I'm not going to be able to be here. I have a meeting in the morning. I'm sorry. Oh. And I love the recipes. <laughs> we'll do it again. And I'll be doing soups from scratch next week where we'll talk about laying a flavor foundation for homemade soups. And I do this whole spotlight series on various ingredients that are in season um, and things that aren't necessarily don't have a season with them. And so I hope you'll join me if you haven't been to any of my other classes. And these are just some of my other notes for what you get. Anyway, I'll send you an email. I'll send you some uh, recipes for the, what was it? The porridge. The porridge. Yeah. The porridge. <laughs> you that. I love that word. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's all. Yeah. Does anybody remember? So I do a, I do a class on peas. And does anybody remember that old nursery rhyme? Peas porridge, hot peas porridge. Peas porridge gone. Oh, I don't remember. Hot nine days old. Yeah. Yep. And <laughs> we'll talk about that a little bit in the peas class. <laughs> well, did I promise anything else? I, I'm going to send you the porridge recipe. Was there anything else I, I said I'd send or you would like me to send? You don't want that YouTube video about the turtle, do you? I <laughs> know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, thank you. Right. Ladies, thanks for coming and we'll see you next time. All, All right. right. Thank you. I enjoyed Good. it. Bye. Nice meeting everybody. You too. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. <laughs>